Welcome to DHN. I'm your host, Wade Teamer. There are some big things going on behind the scenes, folks. I know this is crypto and it's always like that, but let me show you what I found this past week. It has come to the surface that the Canadian government has a contract with the World Economic Forum. Now, this contract is to bring about what is called KTDI or Known Traveler Digital Identity. Courtesy of TNC News, the Liberal government has admitted in writing that it is currently working on a $105 million contract with the World Economic Forum to implement digital identities for travel to and from Canada. Conservative MP Leslyn Lewis published an inquiry of ministry she sent to Transport Minister Omar al Gabra in June. The inquiry focused on the federal government's known travel digital identity program first introduced in 2018. Lewis demanded that the government provide information on how many Canadian travelers enrolled in the program, what data was gathered, and how much money was spent on the pilot, among other things. The World Economic Forum, Air Canada, the Toronto Pearson International Airport, the Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport, and others are listed as pilot partners on the KTDI website. The project is described as a World Economic Forum initiative that will allow governments to access verifiable claims of a traveler's identity through the use of a digital identity prototype. Algebra's office provided a few details in their feedback, but the phrase, this information is not available, appeared five times in their government's response. When asked the question of how many travelers were opted into the program, Algebra's office said, this information is not available. The volume of participants, however, would be determined by the participating air carriers. So the tone of this whole situation just screams, keep this under wraps, right? Here's my favorite part. At the bottom of the report, the very last section, it says, when asked what specific technologies were being used, Al Gabra responded by saying, this information is not available. However, prior to the deferral of the pilot, the proposed technologies to be included were distributed ledger technologies, biometric technologies, and cryptography. Now, where we go from here, folks, it's probably going to blow your mind. This story sent me on a journey through Canada to find out what in the world was really going on there. It wasn't that long ago the Canadian government was cutting people off from their money because they felt they wanted to protest. Now, I feel I must put down a little context because there are still some hustlers out there, some people that might not be aware of these organizations. If you're new to all this, I would suggest take 20 minutes, Google some of these organizations, these entities, and over time, I promise you'll start to see the bigger picture. But the World Economic Forum is a global body, leader of the Great Reset, and the people who want us to own nothing and be happy about it has had its hands in DLT and blockchain since 2015. This is, of course, an attempt to push forward their Great Reset initiative, which, in my eyes, started in 2020, because if you look around, nothing has been the same since. This traveler's ID in question has been an ongoing project since 2018. From what I have learned about the World Economic Forum is that they are never alone and they never just operate in one place. Let's go back to our Agenda 2022 video. If you were not with the network back in December of 2021, what we did was break down a report from the G20. In it, we got a timeline of events for the year 2022 on what we could expect. Boy, I did not think this thing was going to be so accurate. In June, it said we would get ISO formatting. That's when the ISO conversation really started to heat up. We got announcements about how the switch would happen and who would be involved. Shortly after that, we got a definitive date and the process from the Fed. On that note, the first two quarters of this year were focused on interlinking payment standards and guidelines. By September, the Fed Now Instant Payment System announced its launch date. July was all about interlinking central bank digital currencies. Well, just last week, the Bank for International Settlements announced they have completed the pilot program for a multi-CBDC framework. And then SWIFT comes out and says they've solved the interoperability problem using blockchain technology. Let that show you just how fast things move in this space. But this all brings us to October. What can we expect? Well, this is the month when they do a stock take of global digital identifiers. This is so that in December, we will start to see digital identity solution proposals. 
So over the next couple of months, expect to see more news about digital IDs. As a matter of fact, we're kind of leaning in that direction already. Just a couple days ago, Circle came out and stated how they were creating a brand new institutional digital identity software called Verite. Verite will be used by the likes of Hedera, XLM, Algorand, Solana. But we started this video in Canada. So are there any Canadian digital ID programs to be aware of? As a matter of fact, there is an entire organization that has been around for years, the DIACC. Now, we won't go through the entire thing here because that's the type of content that the Diamond Hustlers are going to get. But I will show you a couple members of the group and the connections that I made. First, as you can see, PWC. That's PricewaterhouseCoopers. Whenever I see them, I think VChain. Back in November, VeChain partnered with Canadian software company Micromation. This partnership is focused more so on the retail side, but Micromation itself is a company in Canada that consults other firms on which blockchains someone should be interested in. Clearly, it's been working for VeChain because a few months later, VeChain partnered with TrueTrace, another Canadian-based firm. So, that's big. Not a shocker because, hey, VeChain is everywhere. But at this point in my research, I'm like, I need a little bit more. You think we need one more? This brought up IOTA. For starters, IOTA has been tied with the Canadian government for about three to four years now. Around the same time, these digital ID programs begin. We have Climate Check, which is Canada's carbon credit platform. IOTA handles the identity verification of customers using that service. But here's where things start cooking for real. Back in 2018, IOTA released a product called IM Pass. This application creates a digital identity using biometric software. Your ID is based upon the structure of the veins in your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at your hand. You see that M there? That's IOTA, the whole application right there. In addition, IOTA has an upgrade coming in the form of Stardust. The Stardust upgrade will unlock on ledger permanent data storage, which will allow users to store decentralized identifier documents directly in the ledger. Permanent data storage, guys. That's important. We also love Algo on this channel. Well, they too have digital ID software. First, I have to bring up Flex ID, mainly because they just did, they just published a report Algorand did through the Africa Blockchain Foundation. You can find it on their Twitter. It's actually a very good read. Secondly, the World Economic Forum has a very particular soft spot for Africa, but I don't think it's for the best reasons. As far as Canada specifically, on October 7th, exactly 365 days ago, found that kind of cool. Algorand Foundation partnered with Login ID. To summarize this whole story, the reason they came together was so Login ID developers could, with one touch smart contract execution to Algorand, developers and enterprises will enable any customer to execute a smart contract using the biometrics on their device without any downloads or plugins needed. Given that there are 4 billion devices globally that support FIDO, this is a significant step in making Algorand available to all. This was said by Sean Lee, CEO of the Algorand Foundation. But what's important here? One touch smart contract execution using your biometric identity. That'd be super easy to put into an airport, wouldn't it? Lastly, I did find, I did find some stuff about the almighty XRP. This one was kind of tricky though, but we did just get word last month that Ripple was expanding into Toronto. They have a new base of operations there. Ripple has a knack for setting up in places where their apps are being used the most. That's one of the reasons why they moved to Dubai not too long ago. But back in 2020, Ripple revealed a digital ID project along with 40 companies that were participating. There are some very recognizable names on this list. The biggest one is TRISA or Decentralized Cryptocurrency Travel Rule Compliance. This organization is responsible for the effective and efficient movement of data from one source to another, especially when dealing with nation to nation relations. You can look at that as a form of infrastructure for the World Economic Forum's KTDI. Now, let me cap all of this off by bringing up once again, the fact that not only has the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation announced that they would be in operation for another 25 years, they are also putting down $200 million for digital ID infrastructure. I know we hit on a lot in this video, but 
This is still not even breaking the surface when it comes to digital identity programs in this space. I know I've been seeing them pop up for a while. I mean, Digibyte has digital ID. Celo has a digital ID platform. I believe Polygon is doing a form of work with digital identities. Don't forget about those soulbound tokens that we got word of not too long ago. So this subject, it gets deep, folks. But I was always told as a child that the game is sold and not told. With that, that's all for this one, folks. What are your thoughts? Let us know down in the comments. While you're at it, don't forget about the DHN Crypto Journal for 2023. Clearly, there's a lot of projects that we need to learn about. It's the perfect tool for you. Also, our Diamond Hustle members get exclusive crypto documentaries and education. Just click the join button under this video to learn more. And now, to all my digital hustlers worldwide, have a great day, have a prosperous day, and most importantly, if that money is digital, so is the hustle. I'll see y'all in the next video.